This video is about the latest lumber market update information and lumber prices for mid-June 2023. Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give another update on what is happening with softwood lumber prices and the market. And what I can say real quick is that there's not much change with prices since my last update there toward the end of May. The lumber prices uh, did go up and down a little bit by $10, corrected back down the following week by $10. Sometimes they were flat. And so it's a market that we would call going sideways. There are some other commodity items apart from the benchmark Western Spruce 2x4 that we talk about so often that those prices have gone either up or down. So like I say, a sideways market. Let's look real quick at some graphs and we can see where we're at right now. So this is the benchmark lumber construction framing commodity, Western Spruce Pine Fir Kiln Dried 2x4, number two and better. A two year rolling history of that price from the middle of 2021 to now. Most people will immediately notice that red line uh, at this time two years ago, coming off that incredible high, as I was saying, down lower than uh, what, would, what would have been the historical average at that point, and then um, at the end of 2021, back up again, but not as high. And then last year again, until around this time last year, when the new interest rate changes started coming in and uh, housing construction activity slowed down and lumber sales and lumber prices uh, slowed down together with that. And so as people will know, business did not particularly pick up uh, so far this year. The blue line is 2023, a little bit of a blip up in February. As I often explain, that is when the large U.S. home building companies order their wood. And uh, normally this price increase uh, is greater than it is this year. But since all of that construction activity is so muted, sales volumes were low. And so the price has stayed flat. So right now we are at US uh, $360 per thousand board feet, and that's been relatively stable for the entire spring. Of course, now that we have these fires uh, and there might be a threat to supply, we don't know about that yet. This could change as the rest of this year continues to unfold. But for now, we have a good supply demand balance and uh, anyone who is ordering wood can get what they need for the price that they like. So here we have the new Madison's Lumber Prices Index. This is the four species that are comprised in the new lumber futures. As people know, in May that changed from the historical that had been going on since, since the 60s and is now um, just from around this time last year uh, started new. And so we have matched what the species mix is on the futures, which is that Western Spruce 2x4, Eastern Spruce, and hemp fir and Douglas fir. What we did was we took those prices and we weighted them based on what are the production volumes for those particular species. There are details about this on my website. It is heavily weighted towards Western spruce and then Eastern spruce is the next largest and the Douglas fir and hemp fir, they're quite small, only 7% and 2% um, in the weighting. So this graph is the cash price or what's called print, which is the Madison's prices for those uh, few years that you can see. And again, that volatility, especially in 2021 and 2022, but evening out uh, the line for this year, 2023 looks quite similar to 2019, which is prior to all of that huge volatility that we saw due to COVID and the changes to society. So, it's a big question of, is that now stability returned and are things coming back to normal? This graph is just a, a fun exercise that I did taking the new Lumber Futures uh, weekly close, which is the blue line, and my uh, Madison's Lumber Reporter Index, which was the graph you were just looking at. And you can see it's a really good correlation. This is much closer to 
um, the market conditions of what the futures are doing is much closer to what cash or print is doing than the previous historical futures that, like I said, had been traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange since like the 1960s. So we're going to watch that. That blue line only starts in um, August of last year because that was when um, this data set initiated. My lumber prices, of course, go back much further than that, all the way to 1952, as I uh, explain often. And so this is something interesting to watch in the same way that when I make um, my stories about housing and I show how the benchmark lumber prices correlate quite well with the ups and downs of construction activity. Well, we, here we have another confirmation of the market dynamics and how these things are moving together really quite nicely. It is the enormous fires that we're having uh, so far just in Canada and incredibly alarming in how uh, severe and the large number of those fires so early in the season. This is, you know, not really uh, wanting to use the word unprecedented as it seems to be um, everything is unprecedented these days, but um, has never happened before in all of history that we had a good, cold, long, wet winter, which usually means a good snowpack providing moisture for the forest and giving a possibility of defense against um, fires. And what we had this year was literally the second the snow melted and the temperature rose, the fires started and big fires. So uh, a couple of weeks ago there, I was downtown Vancouver at the SFI, the Sustainable Forestry Initiative. It was a conference put together by the PEFC, so the two two of the groups that do certification of forests globally. And there was quite a lot of operators there um, from across Canada and other jurisdictions. We had some really good speakers uh, out of Alberta. And that was at the time when those Alberta fires were really, had been had just started and were burning. And the wisdom there is those fires are not going to be put out this year that those fires are going to burn through until August. And the reason is because they are so severe and they started so early. So generally speaking, when we do have like the wildfire season in Canada or Pacific Northwest, other jurisdictions is later in the year, you know, July, August, after it's been dry for a while, after it's been warm for a while, you know, when the days get to be the longest, when the amount of night is the shortest because it is during the night that the um, natural extinguishing of those fires gets to happen, right? So a lot of the fires are not necessarily in the merchantable timber supply basket. A lot of the fires are not necessarily adjacent to sawmills. So there hasn't at this moment been um, a direct result in lumber prices, everyone is aware. The customers know the operators, obviously the sawmills and the railways and uh, you know the highway uh, in terms of highways getting closed, um, that is happening now. So the impact at the moment is not so much on the lumber as on you know the forest itself. And like I said, a lot of the, those fires are in parkland or just not in uh, timber supply for manufacturing. Uh, but it's very early days and we don't know uh, what's going to happen. This is a very fluid situation, changes day by day. The response has been enormous. Uh, there's um, groups coming from all over the world up into Canada to help put out these fires and um, we are in mitigation mode. So 50% of these fires were started by human activity and that is offensive. That is unacceptable. Zero of these fires should be started by humans, okay? So lightning strikes like British Columbia has an excellent, ever since, you know, back now a good 10 years when we had the pine beetle and all that dead timber, you know, those very dry, uh, large trees that had died standing and were um, depleted of resin and moisture because that's what the pine beetle does. 
um, the Ministry of Forests set up a very good monitoring system of lightning and a very good response. So we monitor uh, where there's storms, uh, lightning strikes, and are able to deploy within 24 hours to uh, put the fires out. Human activity, there, there's no monitoring of that. So, so it, it's outrageous that we're having this big of a problem and half of it didn't even necessarily need to, to be occurring. So generally, you know, as people who follow me frequently understand, um, in the summertime, there's a fire ban, no heavy equipment allowed into the forest, no campfires, and there's uh, also a road ban in the areas that are in the most danger, and that does impact the logging and therefore the timber supply of the sawmills. And the mills prepare for that. The mills know that's going to happen, and they stock up on logs in advance, which is what has happened also this year. So log supply is good. At the moment, the lumber inventory is ample so that those who are ordering, the price is not going up, right? Um, which is not that normal for this time of year. Usually this is construction activity and uh, a higher volume of lumber sales, but we're having a slow year in the housing due to, you know, the change in the economy and the interest rates and all that kind of stuff. So let's look at some of the grass right now, and then I'll come back and say a little bit more in detail. So now to get into a little bit more detail, we've got those top six, the benchmark lumber price and the one panel, the uh, Canadian softwood plywood out of Toronto, showing you how uh, while there are differences in the actual price of these, the trend lines moving up and down do correlate with each other, except of course that plywood, which is the light uh, gray line that's uh, at the top there. Plywood is a bit of a different um, item in that it is used for different purposes than dimension lumber and the manufacturing process is quite different as well. Regardless, when you see through the, about this time last year in June of 2022, how that volatility sort of uh, has come to an end and the uh, prices are um, showing a little bit more moderation, the type of trend that we would normally um, have been used to historically prior to 2020. And so going forward again, this is something that industry and investors watch very closely to see what's gonna happen in the future. Here are those same items that you were just looking at in that graph. The top line there, Western Spruce Pine Fir again, as I showed you that first graph year over year. The second line, Southern Yellow Pine on the east side. That price uh, really sort of seemed to inflate quite a little bit uh, back about a month ago. You can see if you look in the middle of this table at the um, last month column, did reach up to $499 US per thousand board feet, and since then has been dropping back down. So the idea might be that some of those producers there in the US South tried to rise up the price a little bit more than the market could bear. And now it's coming down to be in level with where it fits in, as you can see, the third line, Eastern Spruce. The fourth line there, Studs and then your Douglas fir, and like I said before, Canadian softwood plywood, 9.5 millimeters coming out of Toronto. Okay, great, and so as I say, the price of that benchmark Western Spruce 2x4 has been waffling between 360 and 350 US per thousand board feet for a little bit more than a month. And the sawmills are not ever so motivated to put more manufacturing online when the prices are low like this, when the demand is soft, as customers continue to only order the wood that they need for the projects that they have that they know they're going to use. Meaning on the demand side, nobody is stocking inventory. And that's because things have been so unknown for the past, you know, at least three years that people think maybe the price will go down or they don't know if it'll go up. So why would I why would I buy extra wood to have on hand if the price is not going to change and I'm not going to need it, right? So we had a response from the sawmills at the end of last year and the beginning of this year to curtail due to market conditions, due to the cost of procuring logs in the uh, environment of low lumber prices. 
but now we have this potential unplanned sawmill closures. There have been in these uh, fires for the past uh, month and a half, mills cl being evacuated. Like towns have been evacuated and villages have been evacuated, uh, but also sawmills and those uh, were off, but then have come back on since then. So if that continues, and these are unforeseen, unplanned curtailments that have nothing to do with market conditions, it might have an effect on the lumber prices. The other thing that can happen is if there are storms. So if there's uh, hurricanes and tornadoes uh, later in the summer, as happens in the uh, east and the south of the US, and there is destruction, and that does need rebuilding and causes an increase in lumber demand, then on, from that side, again, prices might go up. So we're just in the middle of June and there's a lot that we don't know. What we have right now is for the past you know, two years, uh, those two years when lumber prices went so incredibly high, we are now at the time of year, during those past two years, that prices started to drop back down. Right. So they had risen into spring and early summer and then very sharp correction. Actually, the correction down was lower than where the prices had previously been. So this volatility that we keep comparing, you know, when I do my uh, show you the charts and the graphs comparing this week, last week, last month, last year and two years ago, we are starting to see uh, the spread is decreasing. And uh, this potentially will give us a little bit more insight into the future as you know, that's what we use the historical data for, but we are year after year now, three times in totally uncharted territory, uh, unpredictable, uh, never happened before. And the effect we don't know. And so that's why it's uh, worthwhile for people to check back often. That's why uh, actual industry folks and people who really uh, are in uh, lumber or watch lumber or are investing in lumber in some way, subscribe to my dashboard to see the full 500 individual softwood lumber and panel co commodity prices all across North America every Friday. We do this every week since 1952. And so I have the data historical and we have the context of what was happening economically with housing and with forestry. And I have the current, the prices that come out are for that week. And then people can use their own insight or contact me for further, um, if they need further information, what might happen, you know, we only do like mid medium term, shorter medium term projections because it's impossible to know on this changing landscape what's gonna happen, you know, six months out. You know, when I talk about historical in um, the seasonality of the construction season and the lumber sales, around now in the middle of June is when things start to slow and prices start to go down. So I think that's what the operators are avoiding by not increasing the manufacturing. We still have production volumes lower uh, for this year than normal uh, during when there is uh, good housing activity. So in terms of the trend, I wouldn't expect prices to drop from where they are now as they normally do seasonally. If all things remain equal and no other dramatic things happen, the prices will stay flat. Okay, and then as I always say, Labor Day is uh, sort of like really when it does into winter, slow down and prices do drop. And, um, you know, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So check back often. Go on my website. The link is here in the caption, madisonsreport.com. You can, along the top there, click on uh, to subscribe. You can click to get a free sample and we'll send you the list of the 500 uh, softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track and what those prices are this week and we'll send you the commentary explaining what happened with the market and what's going on you know at the mills at the reloads with the wholesalers with the customers and I'm going to make some more videos right now uh, about the U.S. housing like I said it's uh, pretty slow and keep coming back 
click subscribe here on YouTube to be notified when I make another video and click like so this video will get recommended to other viewers.